Hey everyone, this is Paul from Hunts Photo Education, um, and I was asked to create a video that just kind of discusses my workflow uh, and what I do in Capture One, so I figured this would be uh, an appropriate time uh, to kind of go through all that. So, um, so we have some fantastic, uh, or well, maybe fantastic images of uh, the darling little Cece. Uh, who's uh, the daughter of one of our store managers, um, and uh, she is quite adorable, and I had the chance to shoot her this past weekend, um, and you can see that I've got a whole bunch of images here uh, from those sessions, some of which are good, some of which are okay, and what I want to do is I want to just kind of go through a quick workflow, you know, what I do when I normally go through a normal shoot. Um, so we will start with that. So first off, uh, you'll notice in the top left-hand corner where I have uh, all of my tools, all of my tool tabs, uh, I only have a certain number of them. So I've got my library tab, I've got my exposure tab, and I've got my output tab. Um, and I really don't need that much more than that. Um, so, you know, uh, if I right-click right here, you'll see that I have the ability to add other tool tabs such as Capture, which I actually use uh, when I do any kind of um, tethering, uh, and then other ones like Lens and Local Adjustments and Metadata. Uh, I don't use all of the tool tabs because I actually like them to just kind of fall under one, and I put the majority of those under Exposure. Uh, so you'll notice here uh, under the Exposure tab I have Histogram, Base Characteristics, which is uh, Profiles, exposure, cropping, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you know, this would be a great time to pause it and kind of take a look, see what's there. I'm going to go through all of them uh, in a few minutes, but uh, just, you know, to kind of get a chance to see what it is that I do, uh, that's a good opportunity. Uh, some of the ones I just don't include in there, like lens, uh, because I don't use it as often, but I can certainly add it in uh, if I wanted to by uh, right-clicking up here in this little section and adding the tool so I could go in and add lens corrections, things like that. So I have the ability to do that. Um, and if I wanted to remove a tab, I could also do it in that way. Okay, so when I get started, uh, so after importing the images, which I imported these in, I actually did a session uh, because I tethered directly. and. Um, you'll notice that uh, I've got these right here. And so what I tend to do is I like to go through my images one by one and, uh, <coughs> excuse me, just um, kind of go through them and determine uh, which ones are kind of like top picks, the ones that I really want to go in and edit. So I'll usually go through a session of, uh, you know, however many images. This is actually only half of that number because the raw and JPEG coming in. Uh, so I'll have, you know, 200 or so images, and I'll, you know, narrow it down to about 10 to 15. Um, so what I like to do is I actually like to go through them one by one and just kind of star rate the ones that I really like because then I can return to those in the end. So I'm just going to kind of, you know, label off a few here. So, you know, I'm just going to label this as a one star. Not that it, I dislike it anymore. It's just signifying that this is one of those images that I want to return to. Um, you know, I have 266 images here, so I'm not going to necessarily want to go through all of them one by one. One of the cool things that I have the ability to do is if I, uh, I have the ability to select up to four, uh, or even more than that, but I usually stick with four at once. So if I uh, select this image at the top on the right-hand panel and then hold down Shift and click all the way to the bottom, you'll notice that it's now selecting all four of those images. So I can now go through them four by four by holding down either the Alt or Option key and pressing to the right or left. So you'll notice I'm holding down Option uh, or Alt and I can now scroll through them like that. Okay. Um, this one's already been edited. I'll kind of come back to that one in a minute. Um, so in doing that, um, so this one's got the star, you know, the single star rating. And if I happen to find one, you know, so, you know, let's say, for example, I really like this one where she's pulling back her hair, for example. I can click on that. Now, it's really important when I hit the star rating right now. So I'm going to do one star. I want you to notice that only uh, 
only that one shows up as, actually, excuse me, all four of these show up as star, now star rated. And that is specifically because if I go to image, uh, there is a check mark on edit all selected variants, which means that when I do something, it's going to do it to all of them. Because technically I'm viewing four at a time here. Okay, So if I uncheck that, so first off I'm going to set the rating back to zero. And if I uncheck that, now if I hit the one star rating, you'll see that only that one has that star rating like that. But I can still cycle through four by four. I'm going to well, this one is the one star. This was the one I was planning on uh, editing here. Uh, maybe this one. Uh, cute little belly shot there. Same with that one. Okay. And uh, whatever. It doesn't really matter. I don't need to go into a whole ton of these. So maybe I'll just pick one more. Okay. So um, now what I'm going to do is, so I've, let's say I've gone through my whole selection and I'm pretty happy. Uh, I now only want to filter what it is that I want to go in and now edit. Uh, so you'll notice that um, down here under the filter, uh, I can, it says one star and seven selected. So these are the seven images. This is important because I have, you know, 266 or so images uh, that I have been uh, going through. And of those 266 images, I don't want to have to see all of them at one time. I also don't want to have to search for the star rating on this side to see what was good and what wasn't. So if I then hit that, this allows me to kind of filter down, and now I've only got these seven images. And this is important because as I move forward to the Exposure tab or any of the other tabs, I'm not going to have the access to those other images. To get back to those other images, I have to return to the library. Uh, and that's just a pain to have to kind of go back and forth like that. So it's just important that I only see the ones that I want to go in and edit. Now, since I've done some editing to some of these, I'm actually going to reset any uh, kind of edits that I've uh, done to this. Okay, this one hasn't had any edits, and you can tell because it doesn't say reset. Um, same with that. But this one's definitely had some... There we go. Okay, so it was actually just that one image, and that's actually the one that I wanted to work on. It's the one I've been kind of playing with. Um, so now that I'm in the exposure panel, and again, these are you know kind of the things that I want to keep in my exposure panel. Um, you know, I look at my histogram. My histogram looks pretty good. I've got a lot of information here on the side of, you know, not that much information down here, but that's okay. It's a you know. A person wearing a light blue shirt, dark blue pants on a white background. So I expect my histogram should look kind of like this. Um, base characteristics, this is where I can change my profile and I usually like to. Uh, I uh, have a profile that I uh, have developed uh, for this camera in this lighting situation, uh, which is this one right here. Um, but uh, if you don't have that, certainly you can just stick with you know your standard uh, generic profile, which is usually pretty good. Uh, one of the cool things you can change the curve in here uh, to give a different kind of effect uh, extra shadow, high contrast, film, uh, film standard and linear response. And Linear response is kind of like the flattest possible image which uh, sometimes will be good because it'll give you a little bit more detail uh, if you're looking for that. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and just I'm gonna do exactly that. I'm gonna set it to my little profile and then linear response. So it actually, you know, you notice that the histogram looks significantly different when I do that. Um, normally I don't crop at first, um, but I want to in this case. So I'm actually going to go in and do a little crop. I want to make sure that my ratio is set the way I want it, which in this case is a ratio of uh, the original ratio, which is a two by three ratio. Okay and I'm gonna just bring it in by the corner. So when I do that original ratio, you'll notice that it brings it in incrementally top and bottom at the same time, uh, sorry, top and sides at the same time. And I'm gonna maybe, uh, I don't know, bring it up like that just to kind of get a slightly better crop. I, I think I like that a little bit more, even though I'm cropping you know, the foot still in there, but whatever, it looks pretty good. Um, White balance is pretty spot on, so I'm not too worried about that, but if I wanted to adjust my white balance, well, there it is. Uh, exposure. Um, you know, now that I've, you know, looking back at my histogram, now that I've kind of see that this is kind of fallen down by the wayside, I'm going to probably boost my exposure up a little bit just to brighten it. 
um, give it a little bit more life. Um, I like bringing things up in whole numbers, so bringing that up by one full stop makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, I'm not going to touch contrast, brightness, or saturation right now, but I might come back to it later. High dynamic range. This is where I get a little bit more dynamic range, and I'm going to bring in a little bit more from highlights, bring a little bit more in from shadow. So now I've got a super flat image, which actually I really like in most cases. Uh, so then I can kind of build on by adding a little bit of contrast in both from my whites, my blacks, and even a little bit from the contrast. Okay, so that looks pretty good, I think. Um, if I was doing skin softening, I might go into adjust clarity, or if I was doing, you know, some kind of a scene, uh, like a landscape scene, I might go into clarity. I'm not going to in this case, so I'm just going to kind of minimize that. Uh, levels and curve, I'm not going to worry about here. Uh, they're very similar to what you do here, just maybe a little more precise. I would probably leave those alone right now, but they're definitely things that you can kind of come back to. Very helpful, but not right now. So, you know, there's not a whole lot more that I'm going to show you on my normal routine. There's a little bit in the color editor that I would uh, probably go for. Um, I don't really need to worry too much about noise reduction and sharpening in this because it was shot at a very, very low ISO and there's not much noise, not much sharpening needs to be done uh, on this case. Uh, and I would use the color editor, but I'm not going to show the color editor in this video. It just takes a little bit longer than I want it to. Um, but one of the things that I do think is pretty important is uh, when I zoom in here, um, we do have uh, a couple little spots like right here and right here, which I, I do want to uh, kind of clean up a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of spot removal. Um, spot removal is kind of the first tool if I was going to try and get rid of these things that I would want to utilize. Um, you know, a little bit of a blemish right here, a couple things right here. I'm not too worried about the blemish right there, um, but parents really appreciate if I kind of clean up these sorts of things. So uh, I'm going to click on that little spot tool and, you know, just kind of bring it over, make it uh, a different size. So I'm now adjusting these um, by using my bracket keys, which uh, are they're the kind of ones that look like you're kind of enclosing it into a box. That did a pretty good job. Now, it's kind of hard to see sometimes when that circle comes around. So if you press H, it will actually hide it. So that looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. So we're going to try again over here and over here and a tiny little bit over there. And that looks pretty good. Uh, I'll point out that, you know, there's a tiny little dot right there that I might adjust very, very slightly. So I'm going to take this and just kind of expand it out just a touch, just so it looks a little bit better. And I think that looks a little better right there. Um, I can certainly also, you know, also do this, you know, where, you know, I'm, oh, I don't want to adjust that one. Um, you know, I'm just going to go in and kind of expand out this one. And it usually does a pretty decent job at, uh, again, kind of getting rid of, you know, kind of small blemishes, uh, you know. And if I was unhappy with how it looked, I could certainly go in and create a healing layer. And a healing layer would just be a little bit, a little bit more precise. Um, so I'm not going to uh, for this case, but uh, it is an option that I do have that I could go to. Uh, to create a healing layer, I'm just going to kind of show if I want to get rid of this one. I'm just going to minus this one out. Okay, so if I want to do an actual healing layer, uh, then I'm going to go into my Layers tab here, and I'm going to create a new layer. Now, I can either right-click right here and create a healing layer, or if I accidentally just press on it, I can always go to Adjustment and Heal, and it does pretty much the same thing. I love layers in Capture One because I can now name this Blemish. Okay. And uh, that's my brush tool right down there, uh, which I can access by the letter B. And uh, if I'm not happy with the size, again, I can right click, change the size of what I want it to be. And I'm just going to kind of try to be as purposeful as possible. And it's grabbing from over there. Um, 
I'll actually take this back for a second. So you have the ability in Capture One to choose the spot by, again, holding down the Option or Alt key and choosing the spot. Usually the best idea is to choose as close as possible to what it is that you're going to be correcting. So that looks pretty good. Um, again, I'm pretty happy with how that looks. I can also like paint the effect on if need be, um, but I'm pretty happy with how that looks, so I'm going to just kind of stick with that. And, you know, nothing else really major. Again, I wouldn't remove like a little birthmark or whatever that is um, on here. So I think that looks pretty good. Uh, probably the only thing uh, left to do uh, that I would say, because I'm not in this video going to do any color editing, is I might kind of shoot back up to exposure. Uh, Got to make sure I switch back to my background, of course, and uh, just increase a little bit of saturation overall, uh, just because we need a little bit more vibrance, maybe even a little bit more contrast overall. Um, so maybe knock down the saturation just a touch. Yeah, there we go. She was looking a little Oompa Loompa-ish there. I think maybe contrast more than anything else. Bring up a little, you know, it's it, editing these things that can be, you know, you just keep going and going and going. So I think that looks pretty good. Um, you know, I can always compare uh, what I've done um, by uh, right-clicking on the original image and then uh, I'm going to do what's called a new variant, which is going to create a, a duplicate of that, and um, uh, let's see, actually no, I take that back, I'm going to um, <clears throat> do a, I'm going to clone the variant, and then with the second one I'm going to actually reset it back to zero. So now, you know, I've got these two images and I can kind of put them side by side and, you know, see the difference, what I've done between the two. Uh, so yeah, big difference uh, there. Um, I'm gonna probably the only other thing that I might do, which I think is probably nice, is just add a little bit of a vignette, just to kind of darken the edges, uh, bring out my subject just a little more. I don't want to be too crazy about it. Don't want to make it so obvious that I'm creating a vignette, but I think that will be, I think that'll be a good overall vignette. So yeah, and the last step that we have is uh, I can go ahead and export this. So I'm going to go ahead and click export. And I'm going to choose the location where I want it to go. Uh, right now it's going into my exports folder in the editing samples, which is what I generally use for this sort of thing. I'm going to call this CC. Uh, let's see. So if I'm sending this to a client, uh, you know, we'll just say this is CC. Uh, 5033, which is the um, uh, file number, which I like to do. Uh, format, I'm going to just say JPEG, 8-bit, um, you know, just kind of some basics um, on here, uh, you know, just standard. Ooh, I've got a lot of profiles in here. Maybe too many profiles, huh? Standard sRGB color space, not a big deal. Um, if I'm submitting it to a client. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and just click export. And that is my basic process. Uh, the one last thing that I'll show you on here before we get out of here is if I wanted to then go, I'm just going to remove this one. Um, if I wanted to then go and say, okay, I've now got these other images which are also really good and I really want to you know, go in and edit them the same way. If I click on this first one that I have done my edits to, and then I select all the way down here to the bottom, so now I've got five on my screen, I can actually copy all of the changes that I've made on the first image to all the remaining images. Um, there are a couple ways that we can do this. I could do this copy and apply option in the top right hand corner. Um, the problem is because I've A, cropped it, B, done some spot removal and some healing, uh, I don't think it's going to do what I want it to do because it's going to crop in on every single image. So what we would do instead is we would actually go to Adjustments, Copy and Apply Adjustments. And when I do that, it will give me a checkbox of all the different things that I've done, including Crop, which I'm going to take away, Layers, Blemish, I'm going to take that away, don't want those things. Uh, you know, and it'll show you basically everything else, you know, that's in here, uh, what you can do. So once I go ahead and I hit apply, 
that is going to apply that profile to every single one. Uh, good, bad, indifferent, you know, it's going to pretty much do everything that I need it to. Um, you know, I'm moderately happy with how these images look. Um, you know, I would say that in general, you know, I could probably bump up the contrast a little bit. I probably wouldn't, you know, if you're not used to editing using like linear response or anything like that, it's probably not a bad idea to just keep it on the auto setting. Um, but in general, uh, that's my process. Uh, hope that was helpful for you. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to email me classes at huntsphoto.com. Uh, thanks for watching.